In this video, we're going to look at percentages. We're going to look at how you can find the answer to a percent problem, how you can find the whole amount or also the part. To find the answer to these three different situations, we're going to use one simple basic formula. All that's coming up next on The Land of Math. When I'm working with percentages, I like to use a real simple formula to, to work with. So I take the whole amount times the percent written as the decimal, and it's going to equal part. Now, I can take whole times percent, but I can also switch it and make it percent times whole. I can also put it on the right-hand side of the equal sign. So no matter how you set up, you should have percent and whole on one side, part on the other. Now, sometimes you're also going to see a formula kind of like this, where it's the whole amount times, and then I have the percent divided by 100, and that's going to equal the part. It's the same thing as just writing the problem as a decimal. I want to take a second and talk about taking percents and writing them as decimals. Now, we mentioned before how you can take a percent, divide it by 100, and you'll get the decimal. So in this case, 75% divided by 100 is going to be 0.75. If we look at the next one, 9%, if we divide it by, nine, divide it by 100, we get 0.09. And 121% divided by 100, we're going to get 1.21. Now, anytime we're dividing by 100, you're going to notice like a little pattern. The decimal will move two times to the left. The decimal is always the end of a whole number. So for 23%, it would move two times. So the decimal is in front of the two, so 0.23. With the 5%, it has to move two times. On this one, we have to add a zero because we only have one digit. So it's 0 0.05. On the 174%, again, we only move it two times. So it's 1.74. Understanding this will help save you a lot of time switching decimals to percents. The first situation we're going to look at is finding the part. Now what I like to do when I'm starting out is to draw three of these blanks. One blank equals the whole amount, one's the percent, and one's the part. And when I look at a problem, the first thing I'm looking for is, is there a percent? In this case there is. So I'm going to write it where the percent spot would be 0.25 instead of 25%. Then I'm looking to see, is there a whole or a part? In this case we have the whole amount of 20. Now the nice thing about this problem is all we really have to do is just multiply across. So it's 20 times 0.25 or 2500 and we get 5. So in this case 5 is 25% of 20. One of the questions that comes up quite a bit is when I'm looking at a number, is it the whole or is it the part? And so in this question here, we already know the 25%, but we're looking at this number 20. Is it the whole or the part? So a couple little clues. If you see a number with the word is, it's usually the part. And if you see a number with the word of, it's usually the whole amount. So in this problem, when we see of 20, that's kind of like a little clue that is going to be the whole amount. So I'll put that in the whole spot. If it had been with is, it would be the part. So for example, the problem would have been this. 20 is 25%. Well, we know the whole amount is 100%. So they're telling me 20 is 25%, which is a part. And so if that had been the problem, I would have put 20 where the part is. But we don't know what the part is. They're saying what is 25% or what is the part. So I'm just going to put a variable there. Here are four quick examples of us determining if something is a part or a whole. So in this first one, the question starts off 18 is 20%. So they're telling us it's a part. The next one, what is 25%? So we're saying we don't know what the part is. But you see that little clue of 800? That's telling us the whole amount is 800. And then, of course, for the variable, we just use P. This next one, what is 7% of 320? Again, we're saying, what is the percent? It's kind of like saying, what is the part? We don't know. But we do know the whole amount is 320 of 320. And then this last one, 24 is 96%. They're telling us that that's the part. It's not 100%. It's 96%. So we know the 90 or the 24 goes here. And of course, we put our 96% right there. And the variable W for what? So we don't know what the whole amount is. All right, let's look at two more examples of finding the part. So in this case here, we're looking for what is 70% of 50. And again, you can see we're saying what is 70%. So we don't know what the part is. But we do know the whole amount is 50. So, and again, we can look at that of 50. So where the whole amount is, we're going to put 50. And again, that's kind of because the of 50. So we have 50 in the whole amount. And this is nice because we can just multiply these two together. 
and we're, like, we're going to end up with 35. So the answer to this problem is 35 is 70% of 50. Now, our next example, what is 4% of 240? So again, our 4%, we're going to write it as 0 0.04. And we're telling us that we don't know what 4% is. We don't know the part. But we do know this whole amount of 240. And again, these are my favorite kind because they're so easy to do. So we just multiply the two numbers together. And we multiply these two numbers together. We're going to end up with 9.6. So 9.6 would be 4% of 240. In this next situation, we're going to try to find the whole amount. So here's a problem. 7 is 20% of what? So again, we're going to put down the 0.2 for the 20%. So we took care of that. When we look at where it says 7 is 20%. So they're telling us that 7 is 20% or 7 is the part. So I'm going to put that over here. And so that means we're trying to find the whole amount. Now, I'm going to write this. And we're basically what we're looking at is a one-step equation. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do the reverse. We want to get the W, the whole amount, by itself. So I'll divide by 0.2 since we were just multiplying by 0.2. And I do that to both sides. And when I do that, I end up with W equals 35. So this next problem, it's the same thing. We know 12 is 15%. So I put the 15% down. Because 12 is 15%, we're saying it's the part. So 12 is the part, and we're looking for the whole amount. We set this up. It's a one-step equation. I divide by 0.15 on both sides. On this left side, we're left with just the W. On the right side, if I take 12 divided by 0.15, I end up with 80. So 80 is the whole amount. And then here's our last example. Put 0.9 down for the 90%. We're saying 360 is 90%. So that's the part. So now we're going to have to go ahead and solve this one-step equation. Now, one thing you can do is you can actually rearrange these numbers. So instead of saying W times 0.9, we could say 0.9 W equals 360. It's still a multiplication problem. And so we're still going to do the same thing. We're going to do the reverse of multiplying by 0.9, which is to divide by 0.9. We'll do that to both sides. And when we do that on the left side, we're left with the letter W, which represents the whole amount. And then 360 divided by 0.9 is 400. So the whole amount is 400. All right, the last situation we have is trying to find a percent. So here's our problem. 7 is what percent of 20? So I always like to look for percents first, but in this case, you can see we're asking what is a percent. So I just put my variable there. If you remember back when we talked about keywords, like the word is and of, is is telling us kind of like the part. So in this case, 7 is the part, and the 20 of 20 is going to be the whole amount. So just like the previous example, we're looking at a one-step equation here. So I'm going to divide both sides by 20. And that's going to get the variable P by itself. So I have P equals 0.35. Now that's not our answer yet. That's our percent as a decimal. So we need to write it as a percent. So we're going to move it two times to the right, the decimal that is, and we're going to get 35%. Now why are we moving it two times to the right? Because percents are based on 100, we're going to multiply it by 100. Anytime we multiply it by 100, it moves 2 to the right. So here's our next example. 17 is what percent of 25? Put the P down for the variable for percent. The 17 is going to be the part. The 25 is the whole amount. So again, we have our one-step equation of 25P equals 17. Divide both sides by 25. On the left side, we're going to be left with the variable P which stands for percent, the right side is going to be the decimal 0.68. We want to write it as a percent, so we move the decimal twice, again because we're multiplying by 100, and it's 68%. And then our final example here, we have, again, we notice we're missing a percent, so again we put down that P for the variable. We know 32 is going to be the part, so 32 is what percent? Obviously not of 100%, so it's a part, so it's 32. Of the 40 is the whole amount. Again, one step equation, divide both sides by 40. On the left side, we're going to be left with the letter P, the variable P. On the right side, we're going to have a decimal 0.8. Now you can go ahead and put the zero at the end if you'd like. We need to move it over two times to the right because we're multiplying by 100. And so we end up with 80. So 32 is 80% of 40. 
All right, the following are a few shortcuts uh, to solve these th uh, different situations. So if you're trying to find the part, just take the whole amount, multiply it by the percent, which you're going to write as a decimal, and it'll give your answer. So 50 tacos times 0.2 for the 20% gives you 10. The 80 tacos for 75%, you multiply it by 0.75, that'll give you 60. So 60 tacos or soft shell. If you're looking at M&Ms, you're going to take the 120 times 0.125, which is the 12.5%, and you get 15. So there's 15 green M&Ms. If we're looking at trying to find the whole amount, you're going to take your part and you're going to divide it by your percent. And I'll give you the whole amount. So in this example, I spent $2 on drinks. That was 25% of the bill. So if I want to find the bill, I just take the 2 divided by the percent and I get 8. So I spent $8 on the total bill. On this one, take the part, which is the 8 marbles. I'm going to divide it by 40% or 0.4 and that's going to give me 20. So how many total marbles did I have? I had a total of 20 marbles. That was the whole amount. In this question about Holsteins, I have seven Holsteins, that's the part. I'm going to divide it by 2%. When I take 70 divided by 0 0.02, I get 350. So I had 350 different cowls, 2% were Holsteins. If you're trying to find a percent, take the whole amount, I'm sorry, take the part, divide by the whole, it'll give you a decimal, and then just write it as a percent, just move it over twice. So 3 divided by 4 is 0.75. Move the decimal 2 times to the right. And when you move it 2 times to the right, that's going to give you 75 or 75%. Okay, and again, we're moving it twice to the right because it's um, we're based on 100, so we're multiplying by 100. On this one here, we're reading books, or reading pages. We read 60 of 300. So we take the part, divide by the whole, we get 0.2. Move that decimal over 2 times because we're multiplying by 100. And that's going to give us 20, so 20%. So if you read 60 pages of a 300-page book, you just read 20%. And on the last one here on cookies, you ate 5 of 40 cookies. If you take that part 5, divide by 40, you get 0.125. Move the decimal two times over, and you get 12.5%. If you need extra help with percentages, my suggest checking out our book here, The Percentage Guide. Now, I'll put links down below. You can find it on Amazon. You can also find it on Teachers Pay Teachers. So, thank you very much. I hope you liked the video. Hope it was helpful. Have a great day.